Okay, we had previously uh, written the expression for the electric field and uh, the magnetic field in all uh, three uh, portions, that being incident, reflected, and transmitted. Um, in particular, for our case, we had assumed that the incident electric field is only polarized in what? In the plane of incidence. Um, and this is BI. Okay? Um, we had, I think, shown already that because of this, um, um, the electric field continues to be in the plane of incidence, both for the reflected and the transmitted. Okay, so now we're going to use boundary conditions. The boundary conditions is, in, in one case it is uh, epsilon 1, <coughs> epsilon, this is D normal, is continuous. Okay, let's look at what that means for us. So we have epsilon 1, we have the incident. electric field, but and it's in the PI direction, so we have to take the dot product in the normal. See, the normal here is the Z hat component, normal to the surface, the interface. So, and we do the same thing for the PR the reflected normal component should be equal to the transmitted one of the things i have done is computed all of these previously yeah so i, I know i've erased the board but you should have it in your notes and when i do so i would get minus e PI sine theta incident minus E P R sine theta reflected. Well, that's equal to minus epsilon two E P T sine theta. So first of all, we know that these two angles are same. So I'm going to do a, do a little bit of sim simplification. Um, all the negative signs cancel. So then I have E P I plus E P R is equal to, what is it? Epsilon 2 over epsilon 1. Uh, sine theta t over sine theta i e p t because sine theta i and sine theta r is the same. I'm using the law of reflection. I can simplify this little further using Snell's law and I would get sine theta t over sine theta so it becomes n1 I'm going to call this guy beta. So that the math, we have done all of the hard work. trying to do, we're trying to do reflection and transmission coefficient. Okay. Well, that's one of the four maximum boundary conditions. Now, let's do the B normal, which is B1 normal. B normal is 
always continuous because divergence of B is zero. All we have to do is take the dot product of the expression for B and in the normal component, Z component. Again, you may not have that expression at, right on the board at the moment, but you should have it from the previous board, which we erased. So it turns out it is reflection in the j direction over p1 uh, pr dot c. There's no uh, incident component because uh, the incident uh, will not create a z component. Yeah? Meaning e, e does not have uh, an incident component in the j direction because it is in the plane of incidence. That's what I mean. Equals minus E transmitted J component over V2 P Again putting those numbers in, I would get E R J over P1 sine theta I. It's actually sine theta R, but sine the theta I equals theta R, so minus E T J V2 sine theta T. And again, the usual uh, replacing uh, sine theta T over sine theta I by uh, N1 over N2, we get that E R J equals V1 N1 over V2 N2 E T J. But this is C over C. C V is omega. No, V is what? C over N. So V times N is C. So this is E. R J equals E T Again, this is just long, it's not complicated. Turns out um, the next boundary condition, which is what I call it. So E1 parallel equals E2 parallel. This precisely gives that again. So there's nothing new. You should verify this. And so I'm going to call this equation or this equation, I'm going to call it 1 prime. Because we have i's and the, oh, maybe I can even just call it 1. So, there, this, so verify this. It does not yield a new condition. And the last one actually yields uh, interesting result. Oh, this, this is for the Y component. x and y component. This is the equation for the y component. The x component does yield a new result. Um, so the x component. So you will be taking x dot. So I would have e pi pi dot x hat plus E P R 
PR dot X hat equals E transmitted. And when I put in, again, these dot products that we evaluated earlier, I would get E P I cosine theta I minus E P R cosine theta R equals E P T cosine theta T. These two angles are the same, so then I would get E P I minus E P R equals alpha times E P T where alpha equals cosine theta t over cosine theta i. You know what I, oh, so this just directly follows. There's nothing much. But what we need are some, in some of the equations I erased. So I'm going to write that down so that we have access to it because we'll be uh, uh, calculating um, reflection coefficient and transmission coefficient. So the equations we need are E P I plus E P R equals beta E P T, where beta is N1 epsilon 2 over N2 epsilon 1. And then we have this one, E P I minus. See, this is sufficient, right, to calculate if you know these two, these are the two unknowns. And you have two equations. Two equations, two unknowns. You can solve them. Where alpha is cosine theta t over cosine theta i. Um, and, and of course, this is also rj equals Forget, forget this at the moment. But this is sufficient to calculate all the all the things we need. These are the three equations we need. So sine theta t over sine theta i is n1 over n2. Hold on. Uh, where, what, what's your question? For the first one over there. Correct. That comes from uh, Snell's law. Okay. N1 sine theta 1 equals N2 sine theta 2. Okay. Right? We, we call it sine theta 1, sine theta 2 in freshman physics. But here we call it sine theta i and sine theta t. So the ratio of sines on the angles can be written as the inverse ratio of the index of refraction. Yeah? Now it's a matter of uh, solving them. But on the other hand, we do have another boundary condition that we need to apply. And, and, and that will give us an, an important point that will help. We haven't um, shown that the tangential component of, uh, sorry, the, yeah, the tangential, the parallel component of H is continuous because we don't have any free charges. So let me use. Uh, So immediately I can get, listen, if I, this plus this, yeah? This goes away. And I can solve for this in terms of this. So these two imply uh, the final equation that we need, which is E P R equals, now 
beta minus alpha over alpha plus beta e t i. Just by adding these two up. Over here, I'd get alpha plus beta. Yeah? And, uh, and so we can solve for both of them. And e p t equals 2 over alpha plus beta. That means, at least with uh, the objects in the plane of incidence, we can compute the reflected and the transmitted. These two are not in the plane of incidence. This is perpendicular to the plane of incidence. I had mentioned that this should go to 0. We haven't seen that yet. But if it goes to 0, we have all the equations we need. Yeah. I mean, it should, it should be easy to follow, right? If you add these two up, this will give me 2, and this will give me alpha plus beta. So then you get 2 over alpha plus beta. Then if you know 1, you stick it back in there, and you get that. Yeah? There, here, there's a contrast with my notation in Griffith's textbook. So in Griffith's textbook, alpha minus beta over alpha plus beta e p i. I'll tell you why the problem was. Because in the book, this is the direction of e chosen. Yeah, this is Griffiths. But what did we do? Color consistent. This is the polarization we chose. Yeah? So his polarization vector is opposite to our polarization vector. That's why we have beta minus alpha. Griffiths has alpha minus beta. Yeah? So is the polarization of the reflected one something that we choose? No, no, no. That depends on whether this is plus or minus. Mm -hmm. So if we choose this direction, it is this is negative of what Griffiths has. Mm -hmm. That means it's this component. Yeah. That's all. Griffiths didn't call it a polarization vector. They didn't call it PR. They they just drew ER that way without any motivation. We we can we can choose our axes any way which any way we want, okay. but the final result has to be consistent. Yeah, we we picked this to be polarization vector. But it doesn't mean the electric field is this way. It depends on whether the component is plus or minus. Okay. Yeah. So ours is negative compared to Griffith's. That means it's pointing the other way, which is consistent with this diagram. Yeah. But there, if you look at it immediately, you don't know which way the electric field is pointing. And we picked our polarization because k cross p should be j. We just had a consistent recipe. Now, all right, so we, we have everything we need for our transmission and reflection coefficient. We still have uh, polarization outside of the plane of incidence. I had mentioned that this goes to 0, and I have to show now that this goes to, indeed, goes to 0. So the last boundary condition we have left is that the H parallel is continuous, and H parallel is B over mu. That is what H is. So once again, uh, 
I would get E R J over mu one. When you take the parallel component, I get minus cosine theta R. Uh, over V1, sorry. And then I would get a E T J over V2 mu2 cosine theta T. And if you look at this, what you'll see is that E R J cosine theta R is equal to bringing the minus to that side, and I would have um, beta cosine theta t e t j. Correct. Take the dot product when the parallel, but we have taken all the dot products. So taking parallel components should not be a problem. And, and V1, mu1, V2, mu2 turns out to be it's equal to beta because you can always flip, make this uh, mu1 and mu2 uh, by convert using C, E, and those kind of you know, features. Okay, on the one hand, we have this equality which says this and this is equal. On the other hand, cosine is positive because theta is between z minus pi over two and pi over two, right? So the angle of reflection can be from here all the way up to here. It has to be on this side. Same thing with reflection. It has to be from here to all the way here. And when you graph cosine, where is it? Um, from minus pi over to two, to pi over two to pi over two, cosine is positive. This is equal to this. I'm not canceling it off. This is positive, this is positive. This is beta. How can this be negative? So I have a positive number equals a negative number. The only way this can be satisfied, along with if I combine these two, the only way this can happen is, yeah, indeed, ERJ equals ETJ, but they both should be equal to zero. Because if it is non-zero, I can divide it through. And then I get positive equals a negative. That can happen. So they have to be zero. And then we have, you know, statement that what happens in the plane of incidence stays in the plane of incidence. Referring, of, of course, to the electric field. OK? Uh, this is now a very familiar story, and I, I don't want to um, lose track. Remember, these are complex. All of these are complex. Well, th these are in phase. This is always a positive number. So the real parts have to agree. So the transmitted wave, so. I can do this. 
when beta is greater than alpha, when beta than, is greater than alpha, the phase changes. And when uh, alpha is greater than, uh, when beta is greater than alpha, the phase is the same. But that's not true because we picked the direction to be opposite. Yeah? So when beta is greater than alpha, it, the phase flips. And when uh, alpha is greater than beta, nothing happens. Yeah? So that depends on whether this is plus or minus. Um, a couple of special cases. Uh, this is another. This is another note. When beta i is zero, what should happen? What is alpha? It's theta i is 0, this is 1. Uh, and what is beta? Oh, beta has got nothing to do with it. So let me see. I don't know. I, let me simplify. Uh, let's look at alpha. Alpha equals cosine theta t over sine cosine, cosine, theta t, cosine theta i. I will write this as 1 minus sine squared theta i. I'll tell you why I'm writing it as sine squared theta i, because uh, cosine T cosine theta i. I should be very careful with the math. Look at look at what happens. This means I have uh, square root one minus n one over n two. I can use uh, Snell's law and write this as sine theta i squared over cosine theta i. When theta i is 0, when theta i is 0, this is 0. So this is just 1. Cosine of 0 is 1. So alpha is 1, and we would get the pre previous, exactly the previous result. And the previous result follows. Is that clear? See, if I, what is the previous result? had before, right? So it does it does follow because alpha is one. What happens when uh, theta i equals ninety degrees? What happens to alpha? Uh, 
alpha goes to cosine of 90 is what? Zero. Alpha goes to infinity. So what happens to over here? So but theta, let me write it this way. We don't need this anymore. What I can do is I would get E uh, PR. Um, I can do alpha times beta over alpha minus 1 divided by alpha times beta plus 1 E P I. Plus or the uh, complex part doesn't really matter. And then what I'm going to do is cancel this alpha. Correct? And then what do I get? This goes to zero. And uh, oh. these two go to zero. I get minus E. That means all of the amplitude of the incident goes into reflection. What, what must happen to the transmitted part? What do you think happens to the transmitted part? This goes to infinity. This is why if you stand out in the hallway and you look down at the vinyl floor, at far away, it'll look like a mirror. It'll reflect the ceiling light. When you, but if you stand over here, it's not a good reflector if you look straight below. But if you look, you, even as you sit, if you look at by the edge, you can see the vinyl reflecting because you're coming at a angle that's closer and closer to pi over 2. This is why when you're driving on a rainy day far away, it looks like it reflects. Yeah? Is, are you connecting that to the equations? So what, what I'm saying is, look, listen, I said theta i uh, equals 90. What does that mean? So let me draw it this way. Okay, this is 1. This is 2. This is my normal. Okay. Theta i, uh, let's not say equal to, it's hard to draw, approaches 90. Okay, that's, that's sort of what I was struggling with. Seeing it equal yeah. to 90, that didn't really make sense. Yeah, yeah. So let's get, so as it approaches 90, yeah. this is still going to dominate. This will be very small. So that means if you're standing over here, the light will just reflect. You see, so it'll look as a as a mirror. But if you are over here and looking down, well, that's that's the case when this happens. There's no alpha at all. So there is both reflect. You know, it may be a good reflector. It may not be a good reflector, but. At a, at a grazing angle, it becomes more and more a reflector, providing you know we have a linear uh, material and whatnot, dielectric. It's kind of a neat feature, huh? Okay, but there's an even more neat feature. So, did I connect the equations to? Yeah. yeah. So this is. approaching 90 degrees. It becomes a very strong reflector. Uh, the last feature is an unusual one. It's called a Brewster angle. There's an in-between place where the reflection just goes away.
So, uh, when E, P, R, or, or rather E note, note, E, P, R equals zero, when beta equals alpha. So that means there is some angle, I don't know what it is, some angle, let's call it Brewster angle. Well, what is special about Brewster angle? That happens when beta equals alpha. If there is such an angle, if there is such an angle, then this is what you see. And yeah, no reflection. Yeah. But the question is, can that happen? Can is beta over alpha? You know, what if it is more than 90 degrees? Then it won't happen. Well, let's calculate. So, I'm going to, for simplification, again with sine theta and whatnot, I'm going to calculate beta squared. And we just wrote uh, in beta before, so I'm going to write it. Now I'm squaring it. N1 over N2 sine squared beta i. We're just going to call it beta Brewster. over cosine squared theta Brewster. Let's see how the math works out. So then I get beta squared times 1 minus sine squared theta Brewster. Cosine squared, I'm going to write it as 1 over 1 minus sine squared. Then here I get 1 minus n1 over n2 squared sine squared theta Brewster. Now, you might say, where did I get this expression from? If you look at the expression for beta that I've erased, it'll come out to be this. And I'm just squaring it. Uh, let's do the math. So that means beta squared equals, I have this 1. Then I bring this to the other side, beta squared sine squared theta Brewster. That I have minus n1 over n2 squared sine squared theta Brewster. I'm getting out of control with my algebra. 1 plus sine squared theta Brewster, beta squared minus n1 over n2 squared. And so I, I get, I'm just doing. An algebraic simplification. So I'm going to solve for this guy. Sine squared theta Brewster equals this beta squared minus 1 divided by that. OK? And then the usual thing, when for a dielectric, mu2 is approximately the same as mu1, right? So we, we want to see if there are materials where this angle is less than 90 degrees. For these kind of materials, in, in general, uh, I get beta uh, is, is mu, mu2 over mu1. No, sorry. Beta is approximately n2 over n1. Again, if you go back into that expression, you will get, because it is n2 mu1 divided by n1 mu2. The mu2 is cancelled. I get n2 over n1. So I'm going to stick this back in there, and I get sine squared 
theta Brewster equals uh, beta squared over what did I do? So it's one plus beta squared. How did I get that? I mean, I think if you just plug in with the math, you will get it. Uh, let, let's, let's see how we got that. Maybe we can just do it. This is beta squared minus 1, beta squared minus uh, 1 over beta squared, right? And 2 over n1, so it's 1 over beta squared. So that's beta squared minus 1 over beta squared times beta to the fourth minus 1 and that is beta squared minus 1 beta squared beta squared minus 1 beta squared plus 1 See what did I do? Beta to the fourth minus one over beta squared, which I bring to the numerator over here. And then I have beta to the fourth minus one. That is a squared minus b squared is a plus b times a minus b. And these two cancel, and I get turns out uh, it's easier to calculate the tangent. So tangent. Tangent squared theta Brewster is equal to sine squared theta Brewster over cosine squared theta Brewster. That's equal to sine squared theta Brewster over 1 minus sine squared theta Brewster. Now I put that expression. I would get beta squared over 1 plus beta squared times 1 over 1 minus beta squared over 1 plus beta squared. This is just an algebraic simplification. I would get beta squared over 1 plus beta squared. Over here, I would get 1 plus beta squared over 1 plus beta squared minus beta squared that's equal to beta squared. So tangent squared theta is approximately beta squared, or tangent theta is approximately beta. Or oh, this is all for the Brewster angle. So tangent of the Brewster angle is approximately n2 over n1. I mean, this, this class has been just lots and lots of just algebra. And Griffiths has a nice uh, relationship there. He says, uh, for, say, if you use glass, By the way, before I erase any questions. For glass, N2 equals 1.5. Air, N1 is approximately 1. Right? Mm -hmm. So tangent Brewster angle is approximately 1.5. 
which means the Brewster angle is about 60 degrees. So if you set A beam about 60 degrees, you're going to just get that. No reflection. We would have never thought that such a feature exists. On Monday, huh? Yeah. So on Monday, uh, classes, class starts at 11 o'clock, but please tell uh, Martin as well, uh, show up to my office at 10.55. I'll show you the prism. Right? It just goes away. Take a prism and just turn it around. When it gets to 60, there's no reflection on the other side. Yeah, I never would have thought that something like that. Yeah. I know this is um, just crazy algebra, but nonetheless, let me point out a few things uh, just so that I can finish up the lecture. The, as usual, the reflection, reflectance is nothing but the intensity of reflection over the incident intensity. And this is EPR over EPI squared. And we had expressions for this. It's just alpha minus beta over alpha plus beta squared. Transmittance is intensity of transmission over incident intensity. And this is EPT over EPI squared. And that is um, alpha. You, you put in the values, you would get 2 over alpha plus beta squared. We have expressions for all of this. We're just taking the ratio and then squaring it up. That's all we're doing. And you can easily check, as expected, r plus t equals what? One. One. Because of me constantly erasing the board, I've had to call upon equations that we have erased. But the essential content of what I wanted to do is here. And please find it. Yeah? Good. So again, Monday's class begins in my, of in my office.